Hey everybody, Fergie with RecordingCrave.com. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you would go over and click the subscribe button. Thank you so much. Hey, throughout the month of July, for the next 31 days, I'm going to do, be doing recording and mixing strategies with a different video every day over the next 31 days in July. In the first video today, what I would like to cover is color coding your tracks for a more efficient workflow. Let me show you why and some of the reasons that I do it. So I'm using Pro Tools, but you can certainly do it, I assume, in any other DAW that, that's out there. And this is probably more of an entry level thing, but if you're not doing it, this is something that I would consider doing, but uh, not, it's certainly not necessary, but it should help your workflow tremendously. So let's jump into this. So here is my session in Pro Tools. Starting with the first track, we'll go all the way over to the last track. Down there. So I have 58 total channels on this session. You know, I usually I go up to 70 or 80 sometimes. So I think the most I've had is like a little over 80 or something like that. When you color code your tracks, it helps you find what instruments you're working with in a real hurry. For example, my drums. All my drums are grouped together and they're always at the top end of my track. When I say top end, that means channel one through how many drum tracks I have. Now, when in Pro Tools, I'm going to come up here to Setup, and then I'm going to go to Preferences. So in Pro Tools, there is this window here under Pro Tools Preferences, under Display. There's the color coding right here. So you have track type. So this is default track color coding. So when I open a session, and if I start the session by with so many different tracks, whether it's an aux or an instrument track, when it's set up with track type, it comes under a certain color. So like audio tracks will are just generally like a dark blue color. Uh, the aux tracks are generally a darker green color. The master fader will be like a darker red color. And instrument channels will come in as a brown color. And that is under that. Now if I go up to none, I think it comes in at it like a grayscale color. But I have it on track type. And then down here, default clip color coding. So this is the, the track color that you'll see under clip mode. And I will show you that in a second what I mean. Okay, so when I color code tracks, it's fairly easy to do. So down here at the bottom, you can see as I hover there, it says track color code. So if I click on that, actually if I double click on that, this selection comes up. Now, here's the two main buttons that I work with when working with the color codes, the saturation and the brightness. So the brightness I will have anywhere from here to all the way up. So if I go all the way up, you can see the, the track colors get brighter and they're less bright if I go down. You know, some people might like that on their eyes. This is totally a preference thing, but I usually run it right, right in the middle. Saturation, it just saturates the color more so that you can see that's full saturation there. So the color's really coming through. Less saturation, it goes more to a grayscale. And I know guys who mix like this. And then the tabs, the color tab still stays the same. So I usually run the saturation either all the way up or, or somewhere or somewhere close to full on. So when I color code my channels, I've chosen for whatever reason all my drums to be this tan color. Now if I say the wrong color, you may have a different word for the color, but that's because sometimes my wife and I will go back and forth on uh, what we what color like a green maybe or whatever. So my drums are all this tan color. An instrument channel will I just left at the default color of the brown color. Now my percussion, I've used this olive color. And for my aux channels for my drums, I use this default green color here. For my bass, I use blue. And you can see it's this blue here. For all of my guitars, I'll run a green color. 
and I will use variations of green colors. For example, these two tracks here are acoustic guitars, so they're gonna be a different color than my electric guitars, which will be a different green. And what I've done here is I set up, this is more of a routing topic here, but I've set up the acoustics to have their own acoustic aux or bus with their own verb. And the electrics have their own aux as well. Next after that, I run my vocals. So I'll run all my lead vocals right here. So I, I run these colors generally in red. Then all my harmony or backup vocals, I color code another color so I can differentiate the difference between the lead and the background vocals. And then the vocal buses and the verbs and the vocal delays and so on and so forth, the stock color of for the auxes. Now my keyboard, keyboards I run this yellow color. Now these keyboards, if it's an instrument keyboard, I will keep those at brown. Sometimes I've colored them yellow, but usually if it's an instrument, like with a MIDI file, I will keep those the brown color. If it's a keyboard that's brought in through audio, then I will color it the yellow color. Then I have my master bus, and then I have a submaster, which has most of my processing on. That Those both will be this light blue color. So if I click that, that shows up right there. And this is generally the order that I run in. I'll start with my drums, bass, guitars, vocals, and keyboards, and then my master bus. Sometimes I'll move my master bus around uh, in the session depending what I'm working on. I generally run all my buses after the group of channels that, that I have. For example, like the drums, then I'll have my drum bus right here. Because if I'm working on my drums, I may be doing something here on my drum bus that I want to access quickly rather than jumping to the end of the session and back and forth. I want to access it quickly. And then so on and so forth. So my vocals will have all the vocal buses right after the vocals. I know some guys who will run them at the end of their session, kind of like a mixing console. And that's Sort of the way I look at this, it's similar to running live sound. When I would run a live sound setup, I would literally run my sound this way on a mixer. Drums, bass, guitars, vocals, and keys. And then, of course, on a mixer, your aux channels are at the very end, but it's, it's actually a perk that I can move those around. One of the reasons I keep the whole channel colored is because I'm generally looking at the inserts and the sends when I'm mixing. And when I'm scrolling by, like if I'm working on the drums and I don't like something on the bass, I'll scroll over here. I can see this blue is bass right away. If it's all gray, i got to look down and see if I'm on the right one. So, But uh, you may like the gray tone or whatever that your DAW comes with. So what I was showing you under preferences... Under the track color, so this is the default clip color coding and track color. The track color will be the default color of the channel. So you can also change the color here. And a lot of guys will mix from this window right here. I, I do both. What's nice about this is when I'm scrolling here, I will know where I'm at on when I'm editing a track. I've had it before where there are different colors and I've edited the wrong track on accident once. That might have been a rookie mistake, but that I've done that before. When you see a gray color like this, this means that this has been muted. So when I color all the clips according to the track color, I'll know that this is a live channel. When I see a gray section like this, I'll know that it's muted. So if I come over here and hit Command M, that will unmute it. And then you can see the color there. So I'm going to hit Command M again and it will mute it. So here's more drums. So as I'm scrolling down, I'm hitting percussion there. Here's my bass, here's my acoustic guitars. I'm not even looking at the channel, I can tell what I have going on here. Here's my electric channels, here's my vocals, here's my background vocals, my vocal buses, and my submaster and master and the keyboards. So it's a quick way to navigate around your session with the color coding and it works well for me. So hopefully you found this beneficial. Thank you so much for watching.
If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you would. And we'll see you tomorrow in the next video.